Hey there, welcome to Unit 3, Section 4, Solving Equations with Variables on Both Sides. And let me warn you, this is the most difficult section in Unit 3. I repeat, the most difficult section in Unit 3. That should make sense because it's cumulative. We're making these equations more difficult as each section goes on. But what we're going to do here is look at the equations with variables on both sides, variable terms on both sides of the equal sign. All right, so here are the steps that we're going to use to solve these. Okay, we're going to write these out for you here. Step one, we're going to use the distributive property first. If you can see it, the distributive property, and you have parentheses, do that first. Okay, that's most important. We, uh, and that'll basically remove any gr grouping symbols that we have there. Step two, we're going to simplify the expression on each side of the equation. All right, what does that mean? Simplify. That means we're going to use things like combining like terms. That's probably what we're talking about there when we say simplify. It might be uh, doing some some normal multiplication or reducing fractions or something like that, but that's basically what we're looking at. Step three, use the properties of equality. That basically means you multiply both sides of the equation, subtract both sides of the equation. You remember those. Uh, to collect the variable terms on one side of the equation and the constant terms on the other side. Remember, we always look for the variable term that is the smallest. Okay, remember that, right? And use properties of equality to solve for the variable. You check your solution, the original equation. It surprises me how many people are too lazy to check their solution to see if they're right, especially on a mastery check. So here we go with the examples. All right, we have 2x minus 4 equals 12x minus 14. What we like to do, as you know, we draw the line down the middle here, and these are the two sides of our equation, and I find the variable term. So I'm going to highlight here for you. Here's a variable term, here's a variable term. Okay, they both have x's. All right, so what we're looking at is the smallest variable term. Do the opposite of that first. So here the smallest term is 2x. It's a positive 2x. So I'm going to subtract 2x from each side of the equation first. Now that's why we draw that line down the middle. We have one on the left. You put one on the right here. We're going to draw the big old line. And remember, you want to read this like a book. So 2x minus 2x. They cancel. The negative 4 comes down. Don't forget the negative. We have an equal sign. We have 12x minus 2x. That's 10x. And the negative 14 comes down. Now, this is a two-step equation. This is simple stuff. Uh, how do we solve this? We have variables over here. Let's get rid of that 14. So we're going to add 14 to each side. Draw the big line. Now read it left to right just like a book. Negative 4 plus 14. That's a 10. Is going to equal. The 10x comes down. And then the negative 14 plus 14, they cancel, so nothing's left over. I don't have to write anything. Last step. We're going to, let's see, we've got 10 times x. The opposite of multiply is divide, so we're going to multiply or divide both sides by 10. We're going to get 1 equals x. We're done with this one. Now, when I said check it, let's go back to the original equation. 2 times 1 minus 4. That's 2 minus 4. That's a negative 2. What about on the right? We get 12 times 1, which is 12 minus 14. That's a negative 2. Do you see how I did that? I plug the 1 in to both sides of the equation. It works out negative 2 equals negative 2. So that's checking my solution to make sure it's correct. Okay, would you do that in every single problem? I don't know. We have the answers. You can check it to make sure you're doing it right. But if I were taking a mastery check, I would check it every single time. All right, let's go to number 2. Number 2, uh, we're looking at 2 times the quantity x minus 4 equals negative 2x minus 10. I'm going to go back to those steps that we gave you. Step number 1 says use the distributive property. So that's what we're going to look at first here. Whenever you can distribute, distribute. It makes your life so much simpler. So we're going to get 2 times x is 2x. A minus 8 equals, we get negative 2x minus 10. All right, that's what we get after we distribute. The right-hand side stays the same. Now... We look at the equation, and again, here's the center of it. I want to get rid of the term that has variables that is the smaller of the two terms. Okay, so I have a 2x here, and I have a negative 2x. Which one is smaller? The negative 2x. So the opposite of that is we add 2x to each side of the equation. Plus 2x plus 2x. Draw the big line down. All right, so read it left to right like a book. 2x plus 2x, that's 4x. We have minus 8. That kind of hangs out. Then we have the equal sign. Negative 2x plus 2x. They cancel, and we have a negative 10. Don't forget the negative. A lot of students will forget that negative. All right, so now we have a two-step equation. Here's the x term. We want to get rid of the negative 8 first, so we're going to add 8 to each side. Draw the big line. All right, so now read it like a book. I always say read it like a book. I mean it. 
4x, there's nothing underneath it. That's just going to come down, 4x. Negative 8 and positive 8, they cancel the equal sign, and we get negative 10 plus 8 is negative 2. Divide each side by 4. All right, now this is where a lot of students say, but it's so hard, I can't do it. It's a fraction. All right, so we get negative 1 half here. That's okay for an answer. We're going to have fractional answers sometime, so uh, you might as well get some of the examples. So there you go. That's the second example. Uh, if you want, you can plug it back in and check it. We're not going to do that right now, though, but you can trust me that it works. Next example here, number three. This one's ugly. Man, I was looking for ugly problems. First, I went to look at Sully's jump shot. That is ugly in itself, but this is a little bit uglier, so we're going to deal with this first. We're going to go back to the steps that I gave you. All right, the first step is use the distributive property to remove any grouping symbols. So as I look at this distributive property, I can distribute here and I can distribute here. All right, so on the left-hand side, we get, I'm not going to do anything right now. I know some of you are like, just subtract. Yeah, we can. But I'm going to look at the distributive property. That's the step we're going to take. I'm going to get negative 10 times 2. That's negative 20. And then negative 10 times a negative 5n that's a positive 50n. All right, now the next one, remember there's like a negative 1 there? You can always write a 1 in front of that parentheses if there's nothing there. Bruss taught us that in 2, 4. But we have a negative 1 times n. That's a negative n or negative 1n. And a negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. Man, that is ugly. That might be, I don't know, Sally's jump shot, this equation. Eh, it's close. All right, so now I'm going to combine like terms. On the left, I'm going to put these two guys together. On the right, I'm going to put these two guys together, as well as maybe that 1 and the negative 20. So let's see what we get after we do that. We get 80n minus 30n. That's 50n. Is equal to. All right, so now I'm going to go with the n terms here. 49n, because it's 50n minus 1n. So we're going to get 49n. Those guys kind of go away. And we have negative 20 plus 1. That's going to give me a negative 19. Well, now look, we have variables on both sides. You want to pick the term that is smaller. So that's the 49 and do the opposite. So we got negative 49n, negative 49n, both sides of the equation. Draw the line, read it like a book, left to right. So 50n minus 49n is 1n, the equal sign. These cancel out, and then we have a negative 19. Guess what? 1n, you can divide by 1, but 1n is just n n equals negative 19. Voila! Whew! That was ugly. Let's do another one. Okay, this bad boy is going to be using some uh, distributive property, and we got some decimals in there, so that just makes it ugly in general. So let's distribute first. That's the first step. We're going to get 4n plus 4 times 0.5. That's just 2, so I'm going to write positive 2. That's just plus 2. That's going to equal 10n minus 10. All right, we good with that? I'm going to draw that line down the middle just so we see it. So now we look at both sides of the equation. I find the term that has variables. That's this one and this one. The smaller one. All right, so that's the 4n. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 4n. I'm going to get rid of that 4n from both sides. By the way, why do we pick the smaller one? Has anybody told you that? Okay, read it like a book. 2 equals 6n, and then the minus 10 comes down. Answer to the question, we pick the smaller one so that everything stays positive. Look, I subtract 4n from each side, 10 minus 4, that stays positive, it's 6n. You can subtract 10n from both sides, but that's going to give you a negative 6n down here, and it's just my experience that when students have negatives, they mess it up more often. All right. So the reason I say pick the smaller one is because it's going to keep everything positive for you. Now, back to our regularly scheduled equation here. We got 2 equals 6n minus 10. Let's get rid of that minus 10. The opposite of subtracting 10 is adding 10, both sides of the equation. Draw the line. So 2 plus 10, 12, equal sign, 6n. And then these guys will cancel out, so they're gone. At this point, it's 6 times n. You do the opposite. We divide by 6. So we're going to get 2 is equal to n. That's okay. You can write n equals 2 as well but I'm going to write 2 equals n. I'm going to be done with it. How is that? Now, weird stuff that can happen. Okay, When every number is a solution to the equation, the equation is called an identity. These can be found when both sides of the equation equal each other. This is important. We have to remember that. If no number exists that is a solution to the equation, we say that the equation has no solution. All right, These can be found when all the variables cancel out on both sides, and only two different numbers are left. 
and their set equal to each other. Wow, that is weird. Let's see what happens here. The identity. What does this look like? Well, I'm going to do the distributive property. We distribute through. Okay, by the way, that 2 doesn't go to that 16 because there's a plus in the middle. It's 2 times this quantity, 2x minus 4. That's what you multiply 2 times each one. All right, so as we do that, we're going to do the distributive property, both sides of the equation. We're going to get 4x minus 8 plus 16 equals 4x plus 8. So now it's a matter of combining like terms. So I'm going to combine the negative 8 and the positive 16, and that's basically all we have right there. So we're going to get 4x plus 8 equals 4x plus 8. Okay, now... If you notice that these are exactly the same, you can stop right there and say identity. Because look, they're the same. They are the same. Okay, but most people don't recognize this until after they say, all right, I want to subtract one. All right, I'm going to subtract 4x from each side. All right, so if I do that, then they cancel. I get an 8 equals, they cancel 8. All right, so this is where. 90% of the students will figure it out that it's an identity. All right, so the, the rule is, if you, let's see what it says. When every number is a solution, the equation is called an identity. These can be found when both sides of the equation equal each other. Right now, at this point, both sides equal each other, but definitely true at this point. So when does 8 equal 8? The answer is always. All right, so for this equation, we're going to write the words identity. There's no number solution. This is called an identity, which means it doesn't matter what number you plug in. It'll work. Let's pick a number. Okay, random number. You pick one. All right, let's pick two. What's two times two? Four. Four minus four is zero. Zero times two is still zero. Plus 16, you get a 16 here. Okay, is that equal to four times, remember my number I picked was two. Two plus two is four. Four times four is 16. It works. Okay, what if I plug a zero in? It'll work. What if I plug negative 10 in? It'll work. You can try any number right now. You plug it in both sides, it'll work. That's why it's called an identity. So what happens when this is true? The variable terms cancel out, and you're left with two numbers being equal to each other. All right, so the opposite of this. Ooh, opposite. Opposite means opposite. Let's combine like terms. No solution is going to be the opposite. We're going to look through both of these. We're going to combine those like terms. So we have negative 15y plus 7y. So that's going to give us a negative 8y plus 1 is equal to 3 minus 8y. So if I see both of these, I'm probably going to add 8y to both sides. So add 8y, both sides of the equation. All right, so they cancel out. We get 1 is equal to 3. They cancel out. So the answer is when does 1 equal 3? When does 1 equal 3? Never. So that's why we write no solution for this one. This is no solution, which is the opposite of identity. Identity means every single number you plug in will work. No solution means you cannot find a number to plug in here that will work. Because look, we have negative 8y plus 1. When is that going to equal negative 8y plus 3? When are you going to take a quantity, add 1, and it's going to be equal to the same thing plus 3? That will never happen. That's why that one ends up being no solution. So the shortcut for that one, or both of these actually, you're solving along. Solve, solve, solve. And all the, the terms of the variables cancel out. There's no more variables. If they're the same, you write identity. If they're different, you write no solution. It's that simple. Please don't go back. Look, these other problems we did, I didn't write no solution. I didn't write identity. Okay, that's because they're actual answers for those. Now it's your turn to try two. So try these last two here. We'll see how you're doing. Ready, set, pause the video. Go. So we are back. We're looking at both of these. The first one here, let's go through it. You use the distributive property. You're going to get 10 plus 40m equals 12 plus 40m. We get rid of the 40 on both sides. They cancel in both places. You get 10 equals 12. That's going to be no solution. Oh, man, they cancel too. Uh, on the right-hand side, after you distribute, what do you get here? Distribute both sides. We get 4x minus 12 equals negative 12 plus 4x. You subtract 4x from each side, and you're going to get negative 12 equals negative 12. That's an identity. Okay, so... And why is it that identities are happy and no solutions are frowny? So if you're solving and each side of the equation is equal to each other, you write identity. Otherwise, you write no solution. That's it. That is section 3.4. I am warning you. This is the most difficult section in unit 3. So you have a lot of 
practice to do. Do the corrective assignment if you need it. I'm telling you, history shows. This is a tough section. This is Mr. Kelly Baumholder. Remember, it's nice to be important. It's more important to be nice. See ya!